At the Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV, we've extensively ridden both the Honda CRF 300 Rally and the Himalayan Enfield 450, and we love them both. But tonight, we bite the bullet and choose the one that could take us on that round the world adventure. Welcome to Fight Night. No mincing words, but if you want more info, click the link in the top right hand corner. Welcome to Fight Night, where we pit the mighty Red Rooster, the Honda CRF 300 Rally, against the latest from Royal Enfield, the Himalayan 450. Now, this flight is going to be short and sharp. If you want more detail, click the links in the top right hand corner to hear my detailed assessment of both bikes. I'd like a dollar for each time I'm asked what bike would I buy for adventure. My usual response is it depends at that point in time because it's not just about the bike. If they're close in performance and what I'm after, it comes down to price, the cost of setup for my style of adventure, the quality of after sales service, reliability and a whole lot of other stuff fall into the mix. But for these two bikes, I'll make the exception. I'm ready to decide and I'm going to decide tonight. I'm chasing the bike that gets me out of the door on my round the world adventure and that I'm satisfied will take me all the way with a minimum of fuss. It's got to comfortably carry my carcass and camping gear which is about 140 kilograms. So let's get to it. Round one ergos. It's a draw. Both standing and seated position and controls on both bikes are excellent. There's nothing between them. Round two, engine. The winner, the Himalayan. Put simply, it just has more power than the Honda everywhere. Although there is a little vibration at freeway speeds. Round three, suspension. The winner, Himalayan. Straight off the showroom floor, I could get it sorted by getting the springs for my weight. The Honda needs a little more work despite a longer travel. Round four, brakes. And the winner, the Himalayan. Great brakes, great feel of a rear brake and a powerful front brake. Both brakes are a real strength of this bike. Round five, carrying capacity and it's a draw. Both have great frames for supporting luggage. There's nothing between them. Round six, another draw and that's with fuel range. Both bikes can punch out well over 300 kilometers and I'm happy with that. Round seven, rider comfort and the winner is Honda. That screen works and it's out of the way. For long distance miles, wind buffeting can be unpleasant. The Honda have it sorted and you can mount your GPS off the frame. Round eight, seat height, the winner is the Himalayan. Seat height on the Honda is tall once the correct springs for the weight are installed. It actually sags down too much when you initially purchase the bike standard. Round nine, build quality. It's another draw. There's nothing between them. Both have excellent build quality. Round 10, reliability. The winner, Honda. Honda has proven reliability. The Himalayan is the new kid on the block and has to prove itself. Time will tell. Himalayan, Himalayan. Oh God, we're gonna get into that controversy again. But now the real controversy, round 11. There is a knockout winner. And the knockout is the value. The Himalayan can currently be bought in Australia for $8,990 on road. I told you it was gonna be hard and fast. At this point in time, with what I've experienced with these bikes, my choice for a round the world adventure tomorrow would be the Himalayan Enfield. A little fun from Mad TV before I head off to the ABR festival in the UK. Thanks for watching and as Nugget would say, keep your filters clean and your throttles on. Thanks for watching.